Hi everybody, Kevin Ioli from Yahoo Sports. We're back on our boxing page with another interview. Uh, maybe a little bit lesser known face. You haven't seen him getting punched in the face before. Uh, you, ha you haven't seen him uh, in the, well, you've seen him in the ring, but not necessarily with the gloves on. Uh, my guest today is the president of Golden Boy Promotions, one of the best matchmakers of the decade uh, previous, is Eric Gomez. How are you, Eric? I'm good, Kevin. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you being on with me. Uh, you have a big show coming up uh, on January 27th, Saturday, January 27th. Uh, it's the debut of HBO Boxing this year. Uh, Lucas Matisse versus uh, Tua Kiram and uh, Jorge Linares versus Macedo Gesta. Uh, I'll get to that a little bit more uh, in depth, but how many shows do you think you're going to have on uh, HBO this year? Uh, it's, hard, it's hard to say. I mean, we have... Uh eight to 10 kids that, that have been showcased on HBO. They fought last year. Um, we picked up a couple of new uh, champions out of Puerto Rico. So we're excited about that. Uh, who are they? Uh, 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 Alberto Machado, who had a great win and a very good fight. Uh, he's the WBA champion now. Jesus Rojas, who's also the, the featherweight uh, WBA champion. So those are two kids that we feel we can put in big fights and that HBO – would be interested in so we did about 10 shows on hbo last year um i'm not sure if we're going to do that many this year but we'll have our fair share of shows and that that'll segue into sort of my first major topic of conversation with you eric is that you know boxing on television i think is kind of changing you know i think you know what top rank has done on espn is for the better it's reaching a wide audience and you know they're being compelled to put on their their best fights but now you have top rank on espn golden boy is the primary supplier to hbo and then you have the pbc fighters who were primarily fighting on uh, Showtime. Uh, is that split a good thing and having so many different options and having, you know, not mixing the companies up where you can make fights together? Is that a good thing for the sport, do you think? Well, it's a good thing for, for, for I mean, for top rank, uh, you know, I'm happy for them. Uh, it's, been, it's been going pretty good, I, I, I guess. Um, but I think for boxing, you have to make the best fights. And, and sometimes the best fighters are not in your stable. And... You know, I think that we had a lot of success last year because we took some risks and we did fights with other promoters. And that's what it's all about. You're going to win some, you're going to lose, lose some. But at the end of the day, the fans win. So if Top Rank is willing to do shows with us and go to the highest bidder, then it's good. Then that's good for boxing. But if they want to do fights with us, but they put conditions and we, they only have to be on ESPN, that could potentially be a problem. But I think that a lot of the success that we had Golden Boy Promotions last year was that we worked with everybody. Right. And we're willing to work with everybody. You know, we worked with PBC. We did the Chavez fight. Very successful, Canelo Chavez. Uh, we worked with uh, Artie Palula. We worked with Joe DeGuardia, some of the other promoters. So as far as Golden Boy Promotions is concerned, then our philosophy is we want to open the doors and work with everybody. So one of the things Bob Arum said, now they haven't done this yet, you know, say they, they want a purse bid uh, in November to put on uh, the birdie B of light heavyweight title fight. But Bob Arum has said, you know, hey, if we have to trade one of our fighters to PBC, he was using Al Heyman as an example, uh, we will do that to get one of their fighters to fight on ESPN. Would you be, you know, if, if they came to you and said, hey, you have a guy that we think is a great opponent for one of our stars, we want to put him on ESPN. In return, we'll give you another fighter of ours to put on HBO with one of your stars and match up that way. Would you be open to something like that? Definitely. That's what Oscar wants. That's what we want. Um, you know, we're, we want to give our fighters the best opportunities. And it's not about, you know, the network or, or you know, that it has to be on this network or not. But look, if HBO pays more, why wouldn't we explore HBO? If ESPN is going to pay more than I know Peter Nelson at HBO, he understands that, um, you know, so so as long as uh, it's open, we're willing to do that. No problem. Do you think sometimes, you know, like when you mention the money, I, I agree with you. You're running a business and you have a bottom line to answer to. Right. So you have to get that. But I also think, you know, to grow your business, you know, sometimes maybe you take take a short and get the exposure as opposed to just always getting the biggest check and maybe having a less amount of people. How do you balance that? I know you understand it, but how do you balance the need to say, hey, hey let, let's go and fight on you know, X other network, whether it's ESPN or if it's a you know PBC guy, maybe on Fox and fight one of their guys 
and get a wider exposure because the network is bigger than what HBO is, as opposed to saying HBO is offering the absolute most money for this fight. Let's go to HBO. Well, it depends on the status of the fighter. It depends what level your fighter's in. Yes, you're absolutely correct. And there's some instances where you're trying to get an opportunity for your fighter because he's not a champion yet or he's not a well-known name. But if you have a fighter that's a marquee fighter and who's a champion, then obviously, you know, he was, he was, he was given those opportunities and he was built on a certain network. So it just really depends who the opponent is, who it is you're trying to fight. Um, we have fighters like Canelo, for instance. You know, I, I, you know, HBO's been very good to us. We're open to fighting other fighters from other promoters. That's no problem. Mm -hmm. We've been doing that for the last couple of fights with them. Um, so that's one one situation. But like for instance, we have a fighter that's fighting next week, and Jorge Linares. If Bob Arum's open to doing the Lomachenko fight, we're open to it. No problem. You know, as long as what you said, and he's willing to do that, is then you know, let's do some of his other fighters on HBO. That's no problem. Right, yeah, no, he he's on the record saying that. Now, they haven't actually done it yet, so we'll see. But, I mean, if I yeah. can do a little matchmaking here, maybe we'll work it out. And Because so, I would love to see a Linares uh, fight with uh, Lomachenko. Yeah, so, so would we. So would we. And, and, and we've been on the record, and, and we've said that we're willing to do that fight, and Linares is willing to do that fight. And I think it's a terrific fight. You know, um, Lomachenko is a very good fighter, uh, you know, but he's not the top lightweight. He's moving to lightweight now. If he wants to be – the top lightweight, you know, all roads lead, lead to uh, Jorge Linares. Linares is in an interesting position. I want to get to him in a little bit because I think, you know, with Mikey Garcia out there and, you know, he's got guys on either side of him that I think will, will make for good fights. And he's got a really interesting backstory that I want to ask you about in a bit. But since we're talking about TV, let's talk about the health of the sport too. Uh, like I thought uh, boxing had a great year in 2017 a lot of really good fights finally the triple g canelo fight got made uh the klitschko uh joshua fight was huge a lot of uh, a lot of fanfare there earl spence went to england and had a huge uh fight over there a lot of good stuff happened in 2017 but as you go into 2018 people are saying what are the big fights and are the big fights going to get made uh, what is your sense on the overall health of the sport? And do you think it's, uh, you know, you've been around since Oscar has been a pro, basically. Uh, you know, what do you, how do you compare the health of the sport now with some other times in the past? Well, you know, last year was a very, very good year for boxing because the fights that the fans wanted to see got made. The fights like, you're right, you know, the Joshua fight with Klitschko was a big fight. Uh, the Canelo fight with, you know, with with uh, Golovkin was a big fight. Um, if we get more of that this year, the promoters are committed and making the big fights. You got some very good fighters now. Look, Mayweather's now retired. You know who knows if he's coming back or not. But you have really good fighters in Errol Spence who's fighting this weekend. You have Crawford. If those two guys can get together and make a fight, then that's what the sport needs, and that's how you build the sport. And we're we're committed to that. Oscar's committed to it. He's, he's been saying time after time since he took over the company now that he wants to put the best fights together. A lot of you guys in the media or, you know, you guys didn't think we would do Canelo Golovkin, or you guys probably, you know, said, hey, I don't, you know, my, that's their cash cow. They're not. But we're committed to the sport of boxing, and we want to keep doing that. Well, let, let me just, you know, my position for people who don't know, my position had been, you know, maybe in 2014 or 2015, I don't remember when it was. I think it was 15, the summer of 15, when I first said, hey, let's get this fight going. And then when, when Canelo fought Cotto. So my, I was critical of Golden Boy for putting on Liam Smith and those kind of people when I thought, the, you know, the Canelo Triple G fight was the fight to make. I, I've never said that you were afraid to fight him. You know, I, I felt no, no, like, no, no, you know, I'm not, yeah, I'm not singling you out. Right. But, you know, I'll, I'll just give my position because people know. And Oscar, you know, hey, I haven't spoken to Oscar in a long time. Uh, I saw him yeah. at the uh, Canelo Triple G fight. He turned his back on me. Right. So, you know, for whatever, he's <laughs> mad at me. So, so be it. Oh, he's but, fine now. He's fine. But, um, as uh, you know, that was my position. I kind of feel like, hey, it, you know, sometimes. Uh, if we take, like what I said before, if we make these fights that the public wants to see, it rises all on the tide and makes everybody better, right? And that that's, I guess, what all oh, that's. You're absolutely correct. And that's the way we're going to keep the sport relevant. That's how we're going to grow the sport and get these big networks and these big sponsors uh, involved. They want to <laughs> see the big fights as well. You know, look, 
it's no different than any any other sport. You know, eventually you want to see the Yankees play against the Red Sox. You want right. to see the Yankees play against the Dodgers or, or you know, whoever it is you like in baseball. But but it's not always going to happen. Sometimes you got to play the Brewers. Sometimes you got to play these other teams. You know, uh, but 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 uh, you know, not to. I'm not trying to say anything bad about. You just alienated <laughs> Milwaukee fans. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know. Those are the fights that build the sport, and and you got to do them every once in a while. You got to take chances, and we we did our fair share. And I just feel that if Top Rank and PVC and and all these other promoters, if they get together and they really make an effort to make these big fights, it's going to be healthy. It's going to be healthy. Let me ask you this: I, I I covered Oscar from the beginning of his career, you know, pro debut, and I, I covered Oscar's fights. And the one thing Oscar did, even when he became the biggest star in the sport, was he went back and fought on regular HBO. You know, he fought Mayweather, and then the, I think it was his very next fight, if I'm not mistaken, was against Steve Forbes on uh, HBO uh, down yes, there. Yes, yes, he did. Yes. So I, I thought that was great and a way to you know show fans, hey, we can we're going to bring our biggest star and bring him to you where he's more accessible. Some people can't afford to pay 75 or 100 bucks for a pay-per-view what about canelo well is that ever feasible that canelo will ever fight again off of pay-per-view um yes yes and and we're gonna and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try to do that uh ultimately i mean canelo's grown so big now and he really is the star in boxing right now um it, it's very difficult because he makes so much money when he's on pay-per-view and he's been blessed because he's, he's, he's got the ability to do that. But we've talked to him about the importance of fighting live for his fans and he's aware of it. And he's made comments like, yes, you know what? Eventually I do want to do that. Eventually I do want to go back and fight in front of my fans in Mexico. Eventually I do want to fight in Los Angeles again on HBO, on, on, on open HBO. And our relationship with HBO allows that to happen. Um, so that's something that in the very near future, don't be surprised if, if we get that done. Let's hope in the very near future, though, we have a rematch between uh, Gennady and, uh, and Canelo. Uh, two things on that. Uh, fill us in on where you stand with getting a rematch done. And then number two, I had Abel Sanchez on the other day, uh, Gennady Golovkin's trainer for people who don't know him by name. And I asked him about the first fight. He thought that uh, Gennady won the first fight eight rounds to four uh, and you know, really was not happy with uh, Adelaide Burchard, as I can uh, bet you would imagine. Where do we stand with the rematch, getting the rematch made? And then number two, just looking back quickly, give me a recap on how you saw the first fight between the two. Okay, so we're close. We're, we're, I, I feel we're very close. There's a couple of points that we're still negotiating. But as in any big fight, and you know this, Kevin, those points can be big. They can be big points, and, and, and you can blow a fight over those points. So I, I think we're close. We're pushing forward. I've been in constant communication with Tom. I've been in constant communication Tom with Loffler, Tom Loeffler. Tom Loeffler, Tom Loeffler, yes, his promoter uh, here in the U.S. Um, I feel that I feel it'll get done, uh, but we have to be careful. Are, are you there? I'm sorry. I cut uh, off. Yeah, uh, we had a little bit of a glitch in the video, yeah. but I think we're back. Yeah. So, so look, uh, we just got to work through those points. And uh, Gennady was traveling. I, I believe he gets back tomorrow from Kazakhstan. He was over in Kazakhstan. Right. And those last couple of points, uh, uh, Tom's going to go over them with him. And, and as soon as he's good with those points... Uh, then we can move forward. But um, it's a fight the fans want. A lot of you guys in the media, you guys have a lot of interest. You guys have been calling. And I think that it's a great fight. A great. I mean, the first one was a very good fight. I think the second one will be even better. And How did you score the first fight? I had Canelo winning. I, I gave Canelo the first three rounds. And I definitely gave him the last, the last three. I, I thought he figured them out in the last three rounds. And then some of the middle rounds... There was one round where I can't remember whether it was the sixth or the seventh round. Canelo heard him or he stopped him in his tracks. And that was a 50-50 round. And I gave it to Canelo. I'm biased. I, I can admit that I'm biased because, you know, I'm, I'm with Canelo. But, right. you know, it, it, was such, it was such a close fight. It was a close fight because even talking to you guys in the media, some of you had Canelo winning. Some of you had it a draw. I thought a draw was perfect. Did you, Adelaide Bird's scorecard seemed to be bizarre, and that—that's yeah. the I think 
you know, no matter who you thought won the fight, I mean, to think that it was 10 to 2, one guy was ridiculous. Would you agree? Yeah, you know what? I, you know, look, um, I, Adelaide Bird is a very good judge. She probably had an off night, but she's a very good judge. If you look at her record, um, she succeeded maybe 95% of the time, you know, um, so, so she's very good. It's a little unfair that people are really like just bashing her. And, and, you know, I mean, some of the stuff I've read, you know, they want her to get out of boxing. That's, that's unfair. She had a bad night. Right. Okay. It wasn't, I don't, I didn't have it 10 to, I did not have it 10 to, but look, Canelo made him miss a lot. He did miss a lot. Yes. He was being aggressive, but he wasn't being effective. We can argue that point for days. Um, I think a draw was was the right call. One way to settle it, right? One way exactly. to see him do it again. Yes. Well, that's good. Uh, yeah, I like to hear that. Right. Uh, is Vegas probably the leader? I know uh, uh, people in New York uh, at Madison Square Garden I've talked to say they're really interested in the fight. Uh, I assume that somewhere in Texas would want that fight, given Canelo's popularity there. And, and Gennady's popularity. He's popular among uh the, the Mexican and Mexican American fans. So in that area, you know, that fight would, would do well. I think uh, any, any move on the status of where it might be. Our, our goal is to get the fight done, get all the deal points done, get a signed agreement and, and then we'll get to work and have our meetings with the arenas. But there's a lot of interest again, just like the first time. Um, and, and, you know, Vegas is hard to beat. Vegas is really hard to beat because they really lay out the red carpet uh, the amenities there are, are second to none. Uh, but New York is very, very interesting. Uh, what we've talked to them about so far is very interesting. And we can't ignore New York. But our goal right now and w what we've agreed to is let's get a done deal. And then we'll have those conversations. Okay. Very yeah. good. Although I would put in a vote for Vegas because then Kevin I only sleeps in his own bed. And that's always a good thing. <laughs> yeah. We like that. Anyway, so I let, let's move on to the, the show on Saturday. Uh, we got Lucas Matisse in the main event against Tua Kiram. Uh, Matisse, obviously everybody knows him, 38-4 and four with 35 KOs. Kiram, uh, people don't know him so much. This is his first fight out of Thailand, 38-0 with 28 KOs. Two fights ago, he fought a guy who was in his pro debut. Who is Kiram, and, and uh, what can we expect from him? He's a very tough fighter. I mean, style-wise, this is going to be a great fight. It's a, it's a kid that doesn't go back. He doesn't go backwards. And, you know, everybody knows Lucas Matisse. He's an all-action mm -hmm. fighter, big puncher. Um, you can't sleep on these Thai guys. Uh, Chocolatito found that out the yes. hard way. Uh, these guys that come from, from, from Thailand and they're undefeated are always very dangerous because they don't know how to lose and they don't know how to give up. So it's going to be a dangerous fight. Kiram was no, the number one ranked fighter in the WBA and right behind them was Lucas Matisse. So they ordered the fight. We're doing the fight. And, and this is Lucas's chance to become a world champion. So you got to take these fights. Um, on paper, it's a great record. But if you see video of him, and there's some video of him on, on YouTube. I watched one before I talked to you. He's very aggressive. He's very aggressive, throws a lot of punches, and he's big. He's a big, solid welterweight. You got to remember, Lucas is a little guy. He's coming from 140. Although he does carry a big punch, Lucas. Can he carry it to 47? He's only had one fight at 147, so we'll see. You know, I, I, the only question I have about about him is, you know, you're talking about a guy who we don't know anybody on his resume. Like, I'm looking at some of these names going, I, I have never heard of some of these guys, and I yeah. watch a lot of boxing, and I haven't heard of some of these guys. Um, you know, are you confident that the skills match up, that, you know, we're not going to have a mismatch where it's a second or third round? You know, I understand sometimes you can have, a, like, Hearn Tagler is a perfect example of a competitive fight that ends in the third round. I, I get that. But are we going to have a competitive fight where we're on even footing here? I I always say this. I always say this. To be a good matchmaker, the first thing you have to have is luck. <laughs> <laughs> because on paper, a fight can look great on paper. You can have an Oscar De Loya who's undefeated fighting Felix Trinidad who's undefeated. And, you know, all the experts were saying it was going to be a barn burner. And we got a boxing match. So on paper, it looks like it's going to be a great fight. I'm hopeful it will be. But style-wise, Kevin, style-wise, it's a can-miss fight. 
And that's one thing that I've been involved in. I've been doing boxing now for 20 years. Um, Style-wise, it's the perfect style for Lucas Matisse. It's a guy that's going to stand right in front of him. He's not going to go backwards. It's bombs away. And both guys have really high knockout ratio. So I'm hoping we get some rounds out of it. You never know. Um, but style-wise, I know that it, it'll be all action. Let's look at the opener because I, I'm really interested in uh, in uh, Jorge Linares, and I, I've covered his fight for many years. And I, I couldn't believe this when I was looking up his record today. Uh, and Linares is 43 and three with 27 KOs. For people who don't know, uh, he was a world champion over 10 years ago, and this is a guy that people. I think even now, even boxing fans, you know, the hardcore fans know him, but just average boxing fans who tune into fights may not know this guy. Uh, and it's, it's incredible to me. How has he slipped through the cracks like this? An exciting fighter, a guy that puts on amazing fights, and he's a world champion for over 10 years, and he's still, you know, kind of not even in a main event here. He had a couple of setbacks uh, when, when he, he was last fighting here in the United States. Um you know, he lost his title against DeMarco. So I think people uh, kind of count, counted him out or they were turned off uh, uh, with him. Uh, but you got to remember in that fight, that was, a really, that was a really good fight with DeMarco. He was winning most of the fight. He was winning about 10 rounds and he ended up getting stopped on cuts. I believe he cuts a lot. That's a worry. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was in the last round. But this is a kid. That he, was, he started very, very young. You're right. He became champion at a very, very young age. We're talking about a veteran fighter now who really changed his his approach around as a professional. He's really grown into that professional uh, um, uh, attitude, and, and he takes everything very serious now. He's traveled around the world. This is one of the best fighters in the world. He's just a, he's beautiful to watch. A classic boxer puncher. He can get on his toes and box. He can, he can sit down on his punches and, and be aggressive, stand toe-to-toe. This is one of the best fighters in the world, and it, it, his time is now, and he wants the big fights. Hesta um, is somewhat of a tune-up fight, but again, Hesta's also a very good fighter. He only has one loss, and you know he's trained by Freddie Roach. And th there's one thing that I learned throughout my career in boxing is you can never bet against Freddie Roach. Yeah, I don't say this to you gratuitously. Uh... Lenars in, in some ways reminds me of Oscar, you know, maybe not, you know, in the style, way he fights, you know, because he's a guy, he can box, he has a little bit of a punch. You know, Oscar had that big left hook that was was such a dominant punch for him, and Mayorga found that out that was a, a big factor. But, you know, I, I don't think he was as talented as Oscar was, but I mean, I think in a lot of ways he reminds me of Oscar where he can go either way and do it, and he's a guy that's willing to stand in a pocket like Oscar would do against guys and, and, and trade punches. Uh, do, you, do you see any similarities there between those two? No, yeah, very, very similar. I mean, symmetrically, when you watch him, he's beautiful to watch. You know, he keeps his distance and he works his distance well, um, which is one of the things that you see in a lot of the great fighters. You saw that in Oscar. You saw that in, in, in Mayweather. I mean, they know how to – and Pacquiao. They know how to control the distance where they can hit you and you can't hit them. And that's one of the most beautiful things about Jorge Linares. His footwork is incredible. I mean, it's like this guy's floating uh, in the ring in there. So that's one of the things that I like. To, I love to watch in Jorge Linares is his footwork. Uh, he's always in, in, in great position. His balance is great. He has a lot of similarities to a lot of the great fighters. Um, but yet, when you know when he throws his punches, he gets so much leverage, kind of like a, a Alexis Ar Arguello. He gets a lot of leverage. Wow. Um, so, yes, there is some similarities to Oscar. He's lanky. He's tall. You know, Oscar in his prime was right. tall, lanky, thin. Uh, but it's that distance control that sets him apart. You know, the, I think that the really, really great fighters – know how to control the distance and that's something that's similar i mean going back to one of my favorite fighters sugar ray leonard that's what you know that's that's what you know had him above everybody else was that distance control I mean, he was uh, ray leonard was amazing let's wrap on this uh you know in uh what was it 2015 you guys had a settlement with uh your former uh, ceo richard schaefer and you know fighters went to the pbc and you kept some you know you kept some fighters um you lost a heck of a lot of talent at that at that period of time do you feel like you've rebuilt are you back to where you were in terms of you know top to bottom talented roster 
in two, as we start 2018 where you were in 2015 when you had Thurman and Garcia and Broner, et cetera? Um, I think we're getting there. I don't think we're there yet. I think we're getting there. We do have a lot of great young talent. Look, a lot of the talent we lost, we built them. We built them. Me, along with my, my partner and matchmaker, Roberto Diaz, we built a lot of those fighters. We did it all their fights, you know. Deontay Wilder, we, we from 0 to 31 and 0, we, we made all his matches. The same with Danny Garcia. Uh, Daniel Jacobs, we made, we made a majority of his matches. So, you know, we, we signed uh, Broner when he was uh, 4 and 0. You know, we got him 4 and 0, and, and, and we made the majority of his matches as well. So, yeah, it, it was a little painful losing all those fighters, but what we did was we put our nose to the ground and we went to work. And now we're starting to see that. We have some great young talent. Uh, ESPN voted one of our, our prospects as, as prospect of the year, and Ryan Garcia. Right, he's an outstanding fighter, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Virgil Ortiz, who I'm very excited about, is another fighter that we've been building, and this year it's like it's a little bit of a coming out party for them this year. But you'll see a lot of them guys on our on our ESPN series, and they'll start showcasing some of these ESPN fights. Um, but it takes time, uh, you know, when you lose most of your stable. It takes time to get a lot of that back because you have to develop the new kids. And I think we've done a great job in doing that. Well, I'm going to take advantage of one last thing, you Eric Gomez. Uh, since you mentioned Deontay Wilder, and, and I'm really high on the heavyweight division this year with all the fights. Uh, we got a couple heavyweight fights lined up and then potentially Joshua and Wilder later in the year. So I want to get your picks on Anthony Joshua versus Joseph Parker, heavyweight unification fight, Luis Ortiz against Deontay Wilder. Get your pick on that. And then if who do you think would ultimately come out of that? I think the most talented fighter in the heavyweight division is Deontay Wilder. Um, if he gets that jab going, and you, you've seen him. I mean, he's tall. He's like 6'7". Mm -hmm. Very lanky. He's, he's built up now. His body's very strong. It's a shame that he hasn't been able to get any big fights. Uh, but he's ready now. He's ready now. And, and when he gets that jab going, I don't think anybody can beat him. I really don't. Uh, I'm a big Anthony Joshua fan. He's very, very exciting. Uh, he should get past Parker. But he'll have trouble with Deontay. I think Deontay beats him. Interesting. Uh, Hopefully that fight can get done. I hope I'm I'm, I'm hopeful, um, but you know, I, talent wise, uh, you know, Deontay's very talented, and and you know, I mean, this is a kid that he could have been a pro basketball player if he wanted to. He's a good athlete. That, that's all. That's all good he is. You know, he could get on his toes and he can box and he can punch, in many ways like a like a Muhammad Ali. I mean, dare dare I say that? Uh, but. That's the kind of talent he has. I mean, he's a kid that's very athletic, very, very talented. If he can get that jab going, nobody can beat him. Awesome. Well, that's Eric Gomez uh, from Golden Boy Promotions, the president at HBO Sports. Next week, January 27th, you will see that doubleheader that Eric put together. Eric, appreciate you being on with me. Kevin, thank you. Uh, looking forward to seeing you very soon. Thanks, buddy. Thank you.